Uh, welcome to the May meeting of the Mycological Association of Washington. Um, tonight's program is uh, pretty simple. I'm going to do a little intro. I've got a, just a few fungi in the news items. Um, Mitch is going to do an ID table from pictures that people have sent him. And then Shannon Nix has a Mushrooms 201 a uh, program about identifying mushrooms, sort of taking it to the next level if you're a relative beginner. Um, and uh, she's going to take up the rest of the night. So I'm sure you all will have lots of interest in that presentation and lots of questions for her afterwards as well. So we uh, we didn't do a short program ahead of that to make sure we have plenty of time. Um, just to catch everyone up on a couple fun events that we have had that have just passed, um, Annie Weissman hosted a great party for Jacob Kalichman, who um, wrote most of the text for the new Audubon Society Guide to Mushrooms of North America. Um, so it was a great event at her house on Friday night, and we got to hear him talk a little bit about his process and some of his favorite mushrooms. Um, so thanks to Annie for hosting and Sarah Nella for sort of leading the discussion. It was it was a really nice event. Um, and this and the book is out now, so you can order it from Audubon directly, or I think other booksellers should have it. Um, and also this past weekend was the City Nature Challenge. Um, Washington, D.C. has been punching above its weight in terms of the number of observers we've got. So we're up there with bigger cities like L.A. and Houston um, in terms of the number of people submitting observations. And, and uh, D.C. is also in the top 10 for total observations, um, I believe, the last I checked. Um, so you can follow sort of the stats as things come in this week. Um, people, You have all week to get your pictures in if you took any over the weekend. Um, and you can go to the City Nature Challenge 2023 project on iNaturalist um, to see how DC is doing. Um, and I went into our MA project on iNaturalist to see uh, what got submitted specifically um, uh, by our club members and specifically on fungi. Um, so we have a little leaderboard here. This is just for the last four days um, that counted towards the, the City Nature Challenge. But across everybody um, who's part of our mob project, we found 113 species in four days, um, which of just fungi and slime molds is what this collection is. That's Annie Weissman up top, as usual. And Isabella Farr probably will be submitting more over the week. I know she's- Oh yeah, she'll be at the top, uh, <laughs> she'll, she'll be right up there with Annie. Um, in a few days, but I, I grabbed this screenshot this morning. Um, and these were the top 15 species. I just thought this would be a little fun for, for folks to see. So as of this morning, um, there's a, and this is consistent with our experience on the foray that um, Matt and I did yesterday. Um, and I, I'm guessing the one that happened on Saturday as well. There's a lot of um, deer mushroom up, Pluteus cervinus. Um, the violet tooth polypore right now is fresh and bright purple and just beautiful. Um, folks are finding a bunch of wine cap, stropharia, um, and then a lot of the, the usual suspects, the crowded parchment and the false turkey tail and true turkey tail. Um, oh, and a bunch of jelly fungi are up right now, maybe because of all the rain. Um, we were definitely finding, um, which is better and this um, amber jelly and also wood ears and what is it, leafy brain um, and some others. So this is kind of what's up right now. It's a, it, iNaturalist can be a great way to just sort of do a check of what people have been finding recently. Um, so through the City Nature Challenge, if you are curious tonight, they're having an event and also on Thursday night, um, where they do sort of virtual IG together on Zoom. Um, you can go to their website, citynaturechallengedc.org, um, for more information on how that all works. But I think you have to sign up to get the, the Zoom link, and then you can hang out with other people and um, 
this is for the process of going on to observations that people have already posted on iNaturalist and helping um, confirm um, the identifications that people have put on those observations. Um, some upcoming MA events. May 13, we have a mushroom tasting and cooking contest scheduled. It's going to be at Silver Spring United Methodist Church. There are still a few spaces left because um, we found this new venue that has a lot of space for us. So um, if you haven't signed up yet, go uh, on the website, log in as a member, and you should be able to see it there on the calendar and grab a spot. Um, it should be fun. I think Annie uh, or April said that we've got, I think, 10 cooks signed up and um, we've got some guest judges and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's been a little while since we've been able to have a tasting, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, the DNA team's having their next sequencing lab on May 20th, and I just realized this still says Jug Bay Wetlands Sanctuary from last month, but I think it's actually at Mount Rainier. Um, look on, on our website on the calendar and all the information will be in there. Um, our next monthly meeting is June 6th. And um, one other event that we have planned further out, there's a mushroom cultivation workshop again out at Backbone Farm, which is way out in Oakland, Maryland. Um, it's a beautiful spot and lots of interesting um, cultivation happening out there. Lots of weekend forays this year in our area. Uh, we were just talking about the West Virginia Mushroom Club um, will be opening up their registration sometime soon for their August foray. Um, Annie Weissman is going to be a guest identifier and our speaker Shannon Nix is also going to be a speaker at that event. Um, it's always a great one. The North American Mycological Association foray is within driving distance this year. It's going to be in Hendersonville, North Carolina at the end of August. And then the next week, and uh, I should say for that one, um, Bruce Boyer, our NAMA rep, um, was just telling me that uh, registration on that is open and filling up. So, and I know there are a bunch of people from the club um, driving down to that one. Um, so if you're curious, get on the NAMA website. You do have to be a NAMA member to go to the foray, but it's pretty inexpensive to join NAMA. Um, and I believe you get a discount for being a member of MAW. Um, I should clarify that. And um, so then our annual retreat for MA is up at the Sequinota Camp in Jennerstown, Pennsylvania, and that will be Labor Day weekend. So save that date. We have not opened registration yet for that one. Um, Matt's organizing. I think he's going to open it in July. Um, and then there are a couple other forays in September. Um, the Northeast Mycological Federation and Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club um, both have great forays as well. Um, so many, many opportunities to dig deep if you are curious to spend a whole weekend looking at mushrooms. All right, in the news, um, the Washington Post ran an article a couple weeks ago about an article that um, was published in a scientific journal called Myco Keys. Um, I thought this is an interesting point that the authors are making. Um, basically, they're, um, they looked at several databases of sequences that people have run on mushrooms uh, or fungi in general. And what they showed with this graph is that, you know, there's increasing numbers of sequences being done on um, mushroom species that have names and an even much faster increase in the number of mushroom sequences, sequences being done on fungal species that do not have names yet. So undescribed species. And the argument of these folks um, is basically like, we may need some other way to describe species that does not um, follow the current norms if we ever want to get names on this many, you know, tens of thousands of um, species that people are finding now when they're doing 
just sort of large scale surveys of what fungi are in the soil and things like that. Um, so I thought it was interesting that this this sort of argument made it into the Washington Post um, that uh, that there are just you know tens and tens of thousands of of fungal species that have now been sequenced that do not have names. Uh, another article in the post a couple of weeks ago um, was about the boom in mushroom cultivation, sort of small scale cultivation, home based cultivation. Um, apparently, the agriculture department reported that specialty mushroom sales in general rose 32 percent. And then they um, they interviewed North Spore, which is uh, um one of the companies that does the kits that you see for sale, um, you know, very polished boxed kits of mushrooms. Um, and they say their sales have been doubling every year for the last few years, um, which is something that, you know, I know it's it's of interest to folks in the club and, and I'm sure we'll get more cultivation workshops going uh, as well here for, for more, um, DIY cultivation as well. Uh, and then Angela Bryce Smith passed on to me this article that was in ESPN um, that follows several professional athletes on a retreat in Jamaica where they use psilocybin, um, many of them having sort of ongoing pain and, and mental illness issues. Um, and uh, it, it sort of follows them through this, this very specific retreat experience and how these individuals were affected by it. Um, long form article, interesting venue. Um, and then I just had to chuckle that this ended up also in my news feed, along with all of these other articles that um, Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton went out morale hunting and found a lot of morels. And there's a very amusing video in Gwen Stefani's Twitter feed that got picked up in the entertainment press. Um, so if you want to see it, go look up Gwen Stefani on Twitter. It was just one of her recent posts. You'll see it. Freaking out over morels and cooking them up. Uh, so that's all I've got this month. And I will pass things on to Mitch for our ID table. <laughs>